Hello and welcome to the first first pole position. What an exciting start to the Formula One 2017 season we've had. And to talk all about it, I have with me Mithila Mehta and Kunal Shah. Hey. Thank you guys. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Well, Great to, to be back. Yes. <laughs> the Austrian Grand Prix just ended and we see Sebastian Vettel emerge as the winner. Hamilton second. Yes. <laughs> and Bottas third. <laughs> let's just get, let's just dive right into it. Okay, I have to start. <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing yeah. result. I think it was a surprise result. It was probably the most awaited race victory for Formula One, for Sebastian Vettel, for Ferrari. And they've not won in Australia since some 10 years now. Mm -hmm. So a fantastic result and hopefully it will deliver well for us for 2017 as well. What do you think this says, you know, the first race, Vettel goes to outmaneuver sort of Hamilton, wins it. What does this say for the rest of the season? <laughs> Hopefully this sets the tone for the rest of the season. <laughs> like we were saying yesterday, you know, we were uh, cautiously optimistic mm -hmm. that the new regulations would uh, throw up the entire pecking order, but we weren't sure. And you know, this is Mercedes we're talking about yeah. and their, um, you know, their uh, pace all through, you know, through uh, pre-season testing, all through the sessions uh, in Australia indicated that they would be in the front of things. So this is a happy surprise. Yeah, it's a relief for us fans. We, we started the season with an unhappy Toto Wolf banging that <laughs> table. Let's hope that he needs a new table by race four because that would be an outstanding 2017 Formula One season. So it's game on. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and luckily we don't have to, uh, you know, look forward to a season where it's only, only going to be Mercedes 1-2. You know, it's exciting for all of us as fans. It mm -hmm. gives us more reasons to tune in. Yeah. <laughs> of course, if you're watching and you want any questions answered or you have any comments to add to our discussion, please put them in the comments below. We'll take them at the end of the episode. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> let's, okay. So, uh, let's talk a little bit of strategy now. Uh, Ham Ferrari, who've struggled with their pit, st pit stop strategy for so, so many seasons now, they got it bang on right, you know. They, they were the ones who actually said, okay, you know, let's just wait it out, let the Hamilton <laughs> do it first, and it worked. It worked, and I'm usually very nervous when it comes to Ferrari's tyre strategy, mm -hmm. for obvious reasons. And when they left uh, Vettel out for those few extra laps, I was like, oh my God, is this going to be one <laughs> He had his heart in his mouth. <laughs> but uh, it worked out well, and uh, Max Verstappen, thank you very much for holding Lewis Hamilton back. I've been reading a lot of tweets that did Mercedes need to pit him and did mm -hmm. Lewis need to go. First things first, Lewis said he needed new tyres, so that's, yeah. that's an indication. And Mercedes would have, of course, hoped that Red Bull Racing would have also pitted. So there was no way of trying to, you know, it was like a bit of a guesswork and the gamble didn't really work in yeah. their favour. So, all in all, we don't yet know if it is a genuine Ferrari versus a Mercedes battle because I don't think the true pace of both the cars necessarily came out. And 2017 could be about getting track position because you notice Lewis lost the track position of P1 okay. and then he just couldn't claim it back. Yeah. But speaking of Max Verstappen, you know that guy has this ability to show up in the middle of nowhere and completely, <laughs> um, you know, throw things in the result to the mix. So that happened to us uh, last year, you know, in the Abu Dhabi race where Max Verstappen was right out there and yeah. no one expected him to uh, be the wild card to show things up. So, you know, even if it's a Mercedes versus Ferrari battle, you have to keep your eyes out for Max Verstappen and what he could do. Yeah, but uh, are you a little worried about the Red Bull timing? Maybe, you know. Yeah, they finished half, half a, uh, like 30 seconds off, half a minute off the Mercedes pace. So I'm sure everyone's worried about that. They're also worried about uh, reliability issues that Daniel Ricciardo faced because mm -hmm. it's very uncertain yeah. to you know, not have Ricciardo up there smiling and saying, guess what, I had a great race and I did my best, etc. And I am yet to come against somebody who's a Ricciardo hater. So I'm pretty <laughs> sure that a lot of fans were upset seeing Daniel Ricciardo park his car at the Albert Park. It was a di disappointment for sure, but I think we are just happy that at least he had some laps out there mm -hmm. on track. So for all those thousands of fans, you know, cheering him on at his home Grand Prix, and maybe they had like a few drinks at the Shui bar <laughs> after his <laughs> retirement to kind of drown yeah, their sorrows. <laughs> but uh, one of the other, you know, things that we really liked in this first race, what do you think was this, you know, positive think, aspects? Of this? I think Esteban Ocon, brilliant oh, yeah, debut. I was like, yeah, I'm going to clap for him, he was so clap, good. Yeah, yeah like great good. job. <laughs> You know, when he, uh, I think lap 52 was when the first time I think I heard the crowd go wild. <laughs> you know, when he pulled that off, uh, yeah, the, overtaking the, a, a the three track. abreast yeah. overtaking move. That was yeah. outstanding. And I remember the, the most iconic ones, including Ricardo Zonta 
Mika Hakkinen and Michael Schumacher at the famous Belgian uh, Grand Prix circuit, yeah. Spa-Francorchamps. <laughs> I think he did a fantastic uh, overtaking move there. There was Hulkenberg, Alonso and Ocon yeah. at the entry of the corner and at the exit there was Ocon, Ocon. Hulkenberg and Alonso. So, Alonso being the big loser yet again. But yeah. And but honestly, since this is a season where we've all been scared whether there would be enough overtaking, mm. so, you know, while the race itself did not have enough yeah. overtaking, this was a good uh, indication that it can be pulled off if yeah. necessary. Yeah. Absolutely. Yesterday, we were talking about, you know, the rookie yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like, hey, while it's too early to put our money on anyone, the fact that Ocon could pull that off, mm -hmm. you know, all this early. In the pink force yeah. India. Yeah, in the pink force India. I think that's a great sign and uh, great hope for the team. Yeah. 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 And great start for force India as well. Yeah. You know, like Standard. You know, double points double finish. Points. That's yeah. what they wanted. Yeah. The yeah. other team, uh, double points finish was Toro Rosso, which is also fantastic for them. And uh, I'd say Vettel winning was, a, you know, a big upswing <laughs> in, in my view. And, uh, and okay, so that's obviously the positives. What do you think about the negatives in this race? You know, because I think there are still a few issues, or maybe still repeating issues, and you know, because it's the first race, I think that uh, Formula One's looking at. You know, so what do you think needs to be addressed, or what, what were you disappointed by? I'd start with both the Finnish drivers. I huh? I wasn't too pleased, and I know a lot of people are saying that. And Nikki Lauda said that Bottas did as well or as bad as Rosberg would have. And I don't know how long he'll have to wait for his first win. That's going to be one of the first questions as we you know, go and look forward into the season. So to me, both the Finns were a bit of a disappointment. Mm -hmm. Towards the end, it, de it did seem like Botas made ground on Hamilton, but that was also Hamilton cruising to P2, I'm pretty sure. So that is my first disappointment of 2017. Kunal is very disappointed with Botas, but I have a bit of a contrarian view to that. I think that this was a good start. You can't expect yeah. him to go out there and start beating Lewis Hamilton in his first um, race with Mercedes. The fact that he delivered a solid result is um, comforting, you know, and yeah. he can surely build on this momentum in the days to come. The fact that he wasn't like behind by a mile is indicative, mm -hmm. psychologically. If, if, if Botas is working with a sports psychologist, then I'm pretty sure he is. The one thing he should work on is that he should target Mercedes not to replace Rosberg, but to replace Lewis Hamilton. And that's when he would have really arrived in the Formula 1 seat. That's well said. So <laughs> there's, there's a question that one of our uh, viewers has just actually put in, is that do you think uh, Mercedes is actually disappointed by the you know, result? I'm sure Hamilton losing is obviously a disappointment, but <laughs> I, the fact that you know, they did get the 2-3, yeah, so that's, that's one question we had as well, you know, uh, should Mercedes be celebrating a double podium mm -hmm. finish because a lot of teams would celebrate that or should they be disappointed they, they lost and but I think you win some, you lose some and that's pretty much where Mercedes would probably make peace with that. The strangest thing is Lewis Hamilton did not look disappointed and we've seen him in the past, yeah. the yeah. last season, yeah. you know, where he's like this um, really annoyed, spoiled brat, like even if the smallest thing doesn't go this his way. Yeah. But today he was very... Um, happy seemingly on the podium very relaxed so i'd love to be a fly on the wall in the post race yeah, TV, yeah. See what's which is pretty there. much going on right now <laughs> but he did seem a little frustrated during the race i mean we could hear the radio as much as we want to i guess yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, that was probably those teething issues at formula one phase yeah so. but the one point where we did hear him is like how do you expect me to overtake him what, yeah. what, what can i do and you know the <laughs> engines aren't as louder as well so whatever formula one has changed with respect to the driver radio acoustics in 2007 please go back to the 2016 spec because that worked really well for all of us and uh, we did have an aborted start you know when we finally did get yeah. this uh, that, was, that was such an anti-climax yeah. you know we, we've been waiting for months yeah. for the start of the season and then they're like hey guys you know you have to wait two more minutes like we're doing this we, again we, we can term these as teething issues at formula one face that there were few of them in fact at the end of the race there were fans that were actually let out onto the circuit while the cars were still there. And that's a little bit of a dangerous thing. It's happened in the past, as yeah. in, in the 1980s and 70s, it happened at every race. But uh, 2017, it's a little unsafe as well. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> you know, you don't want any incident <laughs> happening after that. Like, you know, you, I'm, I'm sure they've taken note of all this. Absolutely. I'm sure if they're watching, they should take note of all, <laughs> all this. But, uh, you know, uh, talking about nostalgia, the German Italian oh, <laughs> anthem, yes. national anthem. That, that's Schum what I call the Michael Schumacher it anthem just moment. It was. It was. Like, <laughs> a massive throwback, right? Absolutely. It's been so long. Yeah. Which is also, you know, because when you look back, uh, Teresa, who's won 
Austrian Open. Seven out of eleven times he's gone on to win the drivers' yeah. championship. That's a great statistic for Vettel to. Do you think that? No, it's see, true. <laughs> <laughs> see I I think you know irrespective of whether Hamilton wins or Vettel wins, the big question is going to be: Is it really going to be just two of them for the championship? Which I think is fantastic anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But do you do you think this race tells us if uh, the Ferrari is a faster car or the Mercedes? I mean, I I wouldn't that? put my money I think on it's any too of early that. To it's say. too <laughs> early to call that, and uh, we still don't have an answer. Mm -hmm. Like like Red Bull Racing are probably looking for answers. I'm sure people are looking for answers. Which team was actually quicker? And once you sit back and identify the different stints that those drivers did, especially. Uh, you know whether it's on a particular tire or not, you'll know which team was quicker. But eventually, let's just leave it at both teams are competitive enough to entertain us. Yes. And since tires are such a huge talking point, and we keep coming back to them, any thoughts that you guys, you know, any observations on the tires, especially with? Pirelli have done a fantastic job mm -hmm. yet, I'd say, because Sebastian Vettel said this post race as well. So the tires are degrading, which is natural. That's yeah. law of physics. But they're not degrading uh, as much as they used to in the past. And that's allowing drivers to stay in attack mode longer than they've ever done before, which is actually helping. And, you know, we saw in the opening stint where Vettel could stick along with a charging Lewis Hamilton. And that's actually what turned the race around for them. Yeah. And last year, we've criticized Pirelli a lot, a lot, you know, for all the times they didn't get it right. So I'm happy that this time, you know, we can compliment them for a job yes, well done, absolutely. for giving us a fight. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Nikhil, I think the other team we should definitely talk about is McLaren. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was a huge disappointment or just a huge relief that the car got so far. And the fact that Van Doon, um, you know, yeah. he, he finished. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, Fernando Alonso was, uh, I'm sure he was bitterly disappointed to come so close and still not make it mm -hmm. uh, to the end of the race. Yeah. I'm sure they are just happy and celebrating they weren't the first ones to retire <laughs> of the 2017 <laughs> Formula One season. And as for Alonso, he says he drove the best race of his career or one of the best races. Let's remember, he was in P10 for a really long time till Ocon and Hulkenberg yeah. and those Putting on a fight. three yeah. abreast overtaking move we spoke of happened. So I think they're they, of course going to be disappointed. Yeah. And but, you know, yeah. Alonso fighting for P10 is even more disappointing, but they weren't the first ones to retire. Yeah, and the good <laughs> thing is they're not going to be at the back of the grid for sure. You know, there is some bit of a fight, maybe, you know, give... Uh, a fight to the midfield teams. Yeah. We didn't include them in our predictions for the midfield <laughs> battle. <laughs> battle. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they'll surprise us as well, yeah. like Ferrari. Yeah. But, but along with McLaren, the other big disappointment was Haas. Now, Haas. I'm not really talking of the Kevin Magnussen Haas. I'm mm -hmm. talking mainly of the Romain Grosjean Haas, yeah. which actually suffered from a mechanical failure. And at some point, maybe Formula One should include this rule that if, if the good driver in your team retires, you're allowed to swap cars <laughs> with your teammate mid-race. So at least you'll have a good chance of getting a result. That's actually quite interesting. It's funny. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, that would be amazing because we saw how well he did in qualifying. You know? yeah. It was very disappointing to see you know, that Absolutely. happen to him because we have high hopes for him. <laughs> yes. <I> mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking if your rule was enforced last year, there's no way Nico Rosberg would have won the championship. <laughs> <laughs> because That's true. <laughs> well, okay, but... Uh, just before, because we are wrapping up, uh, Williams, Felipe Massa doing well enough, I think. Standard. standard. That's standard Felipe. If that's what you pay, that's what you get. I think he did a good, very good race for a driver who retired and came back. And very so. quietly, you know, no like uh, drama yeah. around him. He had a solid finish and he was there. And of course, the other car, as we expect, not <laughs> will make it. You know? Al although my big worry is that, uh, and uh, you know, the, the gap between the teams is a little too much. Mm -hmm. sure. And we saw that in qualifying, we saw that during the race. In fact, uh, one of my disappointments would be that Sebastian Vettel actually lapped all the way till seventh place, yeah. which is where Sergio Perez finished. And I'm hoping it actually bunches up together. It should as the season progresses and, you know, teams end up finding more time in their cars. Okay, so before we wrap up parting thoughts from the first race of the season, which has been amazing for fans, for the sport, and of course for Ferrari. I think my first parting thought is going to be, I'm very happy to see Vettel going from whining to winning. And I really hope <laughs> he doesn't go back to whining again. I was even happy to see Nico Rosberg tweet and, you know, his personal relationship with Lewis Hamilton. And he tweeted saying, hey, guess what? Vettel has beaten Ferrari and yeah. Ferrari. Sorry, Vettel has beaten Hamilton and Ferrari is quick. So... Uh, I'm hoping this banter stays on as well. Probably he's missing Formula One. I think maybe 
some broadcaster should just you know snap him up because he was like a third com- commentator on Twitter. You know, co- he was like, I don't know how you fans do it, but this is a really early start. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I'm wondering if he's going to have the last laugh. You know, in this entire thing, he's just thinking like, Hey, I'm so glad I'm not there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sitting with my wife enjoying. <laughs> and and his daughter was watching Formula One, so that that bears well. Good well now, well yeah. for her as well. <laughs> I think uh, my parting thought is going to be that you know we still don't know how the pecking order stacks up. Yeah. So we were really excited and um, looking forward to this race. I think that anticipation is only going to get more. You know, yeah. as we look forward to the next race, guys. There's. Lots of reasons to tune in. If you've been one of those um, Ferrari fans in hibernation, yeah. this is a great reason to come back and start watching the sport. Yeah. If you are a Mercedes fan, you know this is an, a, a good opportunity to see how the team gives yeah. back um, to this challenge. Yeah, and you know Mercedes hasn't really seen competition since mm-hmm. about three years now—14, 15, 16. Yeah. So I'm sure they're also a little surprised. They'll have to sharpen their knives and their other armaments to make sure they take on the Ferrari yeah. battle. And also showed, you know, like I saw one of these tweets yesterday where it said, you know, it, it must be so easy to be a Hamilton fan, you know, because <laughs> after qualifying it did that. But this race showed us that let's not bank too much on what happens in qualifying. You know, we might have a few more surprises in store. <laughs> so I think it was a great race, great, it was great, great start to the season, and uh, it got fans really geared up. You know, like we are so <laughs> excited. So I can only imagine. I, I will be surprised if fans don't stay on through the season. And I was expecting a bit of a boring race because we mm-hmm. knew that there was going to be very little overtaking. But I was yeah. pleasantly surprised. I, I mean, I'm happy to see cars fight. I don't necessarily want to see cars overtake each other. Yeah. The the aspect of seeing wheel to wheel battle is what appeals to me more. And we saw a bit of that. And hopefully, as the season progresses, we'll see a lot more a of lot that. A lot more. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, that's it. That's it from our experts here in the Thank house. You. Thank A you. great start to the season. I'm looking forward to even better races. And we'll be back for the next race on uh, 9th April. <laughs> that's the next one. So stay tuned, guys. And thank you so much for watching this episode of the First Post Pole Position.